Is Slapchop still a thing? Is Payton still a thing? Have Sistel just released one of the best ranges of models ever? And do they include dinosaurs? If it is yes to all the above, we're about to have quite a lot of fun. Let's go. What if you want to take everything from Slapchop, add nothing more complex, but maybe just slow down a little bit or do a couple more steps? If that is the case, then this should be a perfect video for you. Aside from like the eyes, I don't think there was any real detail work on this whatsoever, not you know proper, paint, proper painting, and it turned out great. So if you want to see what you could do if you just spent like 20, 30% more time on a couple of aspects of the model, this should take our slap shot video, which went down really well, where we tried to enhance the technique, and our 10 rules video that also went down really well about spending your time the most wisely on a model and combine them in some amazing synergistic, well, it came out pretty well. I think the results kind of speak for themselves and I really, really enjoyed it and I'm really pleased with it. If you're new to the channel, we do a lot of this, a lot of dry brushing, a lot of contrast, a lot of getting stuff looking as good as possible, as fast as possible, and we'll try our best to explain exactly how to get there on the way through. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe and also give us some suggestions down below or any questions you have about this. Stick around to the end, we're announcing some winners who've given us good suggestions previously. As ever, the best suggestion or question, so the most liked by you guys on this one, we won't pick it, will receive a set and a texture palette if they're choosing. Anyway, let's jump in. Final, final, final question. Should I have put blood on this model? I was really debating putting blood on the claws and the mouth. I ended up not doing, was that a mistake or not? Maybe I'll do it in a future video if enough people want to see it. Anyway, let's go a quick assembly roundup. I'm going to leave off any metal bit that I can keep separate. It should be fairly fast and then being separate just makes painting the rest of it at high quality slightly easier. We don't know what we're going to do about this bit because it's kind of dorky and his tail has to go through it. The guy is still in two halves which yes look at that awful idea. I can see why they've done it practically but you know as far as painting and access goes absolute nightmare. So probably what we're going to do is if you imagine we're going to cut this off at some point low for dynamic or high for a bit more dorky. We're not having the back banner. I like it visually but it just makes him really vertical and less dynamic and he's kind of arms out raw. anyway. So yeah we're going to do some adapting here and try and uh, keep this dinosaur looking a little bit more angry and a little less like a toy. The plan is to cut here between those two. So I'm gonna use the flat edge of my clippers, try to get it from whatever is the best angle. If I can get it in straight there, you should be good. You wanna get it in one firm clip. The head's more in the way for this one. Side note, that piece is lost. I've no <laughs> that really went a long way. I have no idea where it is. I'm gonna sand those off, see how they look. It's gonna look a little bit rough, but I'd rather that. And also, it just looks faster now, right? Race car. Better, better, absolutely. No back banner, completely changed. Winner. One drop, back the brush, work it in. Test one finger, test the other finger. Generally want a little bit more for base coat, so I'll go for one in a bit. Always finger first, not brush. We don't want to oversaturate, even if it is the base coat. Probably need two coats. It's not a crazy coverage paint. There's one. There's two. All right, first dry brush. Pretty simple. I'm using a large for this, by the way. I wouldn't recommend using any smaller unless you can't reach anywhere. This is Dark Sea Grey from Vallejo. It's actually quite light. Ignore the name. That's how it looks on my palette. And as ever with Slapshop, this is a fairly heavy dry brush. This is an overbrush. Start lighter than you think. Way better than too heavy. And then when you're confident, that's when you can, uh, you can go in. The shapes on these models are brilliant. I will be taking my time. I don't want to rush any of this. This piece being on a stick is already invaluable. It's just so helpful. I think I could have actually primed this model green, or the brown could be green rather, uh, all over. Go to Dino, just a bit off the flank. Heavy. Anywhere really important on the model, I'll test elsewhere first. Look at that, that all over, let's go. Take your time, build it up. Let's get some variation within that gray. The point is, 
we're not doing it 100% flat. It's not brown or gray. There's gonna be some bits where there's more brown showing through. There is gonna be variation within this step. Make the most of the model, let it do the work. It's gonna look awesome. The next step, you can use any lighter white. You could go straight to white. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna leave myself room to do that. So I'm gonna go for all for one gray first. Give the brush a good clean. A little bit of water, we're not oversaturating. Test. Can never test too much. I've learned the behavior to the model now. So what I'm gonna do is load up the brush. There's a bit more on the brush, but I'm gonna use less pressure. I'm hoping that we can get away with kind of faux non-metallics by doing this carefully. You can even go in with a smaller brush, which I might do and suggest some particularly light points. This has got some cool aspects to it. Like I said, we're going quick anyway, objectively. We're putting down a lot of different variation here. Don't feel any need to rush it any quicker. You're good, you're golden. And it's always when you rush, immediately follows regret. You want to get into flat surfaces, you can stipple it in there. Bear in mind if there's an edge, the way to highlight it is to go across it, not down it. That's already looking cool. I think we're going to be good. All right, this is, um, I think there is too much potential here for me to not try this. So we've grabbed some Ultra Boy, surprise, surprise. Any deep blue would do here though, or even a weak black, a bad one would be fine. I'm gonna try doing a little bit of kind of delicate, smudgy dry brushing. You can use the extra small, or you can use an old stubby brush. So I've got a 1M here that's decidedly seen better days. I gave away my brushes at the last convention I was at. So anywhere that we want darker, I'm just gonna gently smudge things in and really this should be before the white step so i'll repeat the white step and this is just going to darken and exaggerate a few key areas entirely optional i think i'll probably do the base of the feathers it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to go over anything that hits the raised areas with the white anyway so we'll do this before we do the white and then the lovely thing about this is the white's going to have an area of higher contrast for it to contrast against before we put the contrast paint down Thank you, Games Workshop, for stealing one of the most important words in our painting dictionary and making it very hard to use. <laughs> but thank you for making the contrast that we're about to use because this is all going to look wicked. If I could shadow under here, stuff like that, just gently coax it in. Sweet. Okay, so we are done. Looking quite cool. Pretty pleased with how it has come out. Uh, the blue steps, I just kind of guessed a little bit here and there, especially with the stuff on the metals. It's not something that I am as experienced with, so we just pop some here. Basically, the bits that were darker on the model, I've copied. This shield's gonna be at this angle, so I did a little bit more on this side than I did on this side, but uh, I think it should look pretty good. Okay, so as you can see, we have put down the tested color everywhere on the model, apart from one section. I've just put it under armpits in places where it won't matter if it's wrong while I was testing. The reason I've done so much is that the contrast paints age and they thicken quite a lot more than they used to. There's only about a third left and it's definitely behaving differently to how it was when I first got it. So a little bit of experimentation was in order to kind of get the behavior we wanted out of it, which is basically getting it behaving how it used to. So I'm pretty sure that it's evaporated so it's thickened slightly or it's got more concentrated. It stained my skin, um, which says quite a lot actually, because I don't think it used to do that. So it just feels like it's basically got a bit stronger. So I'm gonna put in some contrast medium. And I'm gonna take a little bit of sepia and put that in. I like how the washes behave. I really, really like their behavior. This one's quite a soft one. Make sure we don't have too much on the brush. Now we're gonna do the normal things. We're gonna keep it at the orientation that we want all the way through, which is vertical. He says, whilst not doing so, we're gonna try and avoid the other details as well. For me, this is the single uh, largest weakness of slap chop is you have to paint in the lines. And if I'm trying to go fast, which it is, it's a speed technique, generally trying to go in the lines is something that I find a bit annoying. 
and it slows me down quite drastically. But it's a sacrifice that I'm happy to make for a technique that works. So this foot is going to be a perfect example because I've already done it on the other foot. You just want to stop it from pulling. If I get around the back and then I come back to it, these bits, mopping action, just get in there, pull it out. Anywhere that forms a river or a gully, the recesses, they're the places to watch out for. There we go, that is going to be our first coat. For the second coat, I'm going to bring in something a bit more warm, a bit more deep as far as the colour goes, even if it's a wash, frequent flush shade. And what we're looking for here is something to add depth over the scales that we've already got. Hopefully this works first time. I'll do the normal, I'll test it somewhere. So hopefully you can see it's kind of deepening what we've got there. It is making it a little bit less vibrant, but given that our guy is literally kind of crazy nuts, bright yellow, I'm absolutely fine with that. So second coat. You don't have to be particularly uh, like hugely careful with this. Again, you just want to avoid any excess pulling. Okay, so let's play spot the difference. This is the side that I haven't done the process to, and this is the side that I have done the process to. Completely different. So I had a little play with the flesh shade. It, it just wasn't doing enough fast enough. This isn't like a super fast job, but equally I don't want it to be a super slow job. So basically I've just added a bit of something more potent into the recon. The reason I use this is because it's warm and red and I want a kind of bit of an interesting transition. I just added a tiny, and I mean a tiny bit, this is strong, of Blood Angels red in. When I say a small amount, I mean like that much. So just a tiny amount of this will completely warm this up. See, it's, it's just a bit more bloody. If you're worried about it being too strong, just add in a little bit of contrast medium. Sorry, anti-contamination, please. Really doesn't matter. And then essentially, anywhere where it's pulled, we're just gonna echo that. So, towards the ropes to exaggerate it, in this bit of the neck, pop it there, towards this bit of the knee, and it's just gonna make it look more old and ancient, which is kind of appropriate, given that it's a dinosaur. You can exaggerate cracks here as well, if you want. If you do get it over somewhere, it is gonna change the personality of the area you get it over. So try and keep it to the recesses if that is your aim. Either go one way or the other. You could have it going all the scale, over all the scales, maybe towards the top or something. The ones that GW have done, they get darker towards the top on the scales. Could look cool if you were consistent with it. So either do or don't, but don't have a kind of variation. We're gonna do that and we'll just do what we've done on this side. On this side, it's gonna add a load of depth. At that point, we're gonna start detailing. Even if we go back to the flesh, we need to see how the detail is gonna look against the flesh. All right, you'll notice that I'm working on one side of the model. This is so we've got a nice kind of before and after. This is kind of basic. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's basic. It's just done one layer, that's it. This is where we've done a little bit more thought and, you know, kind of we've considered the process and what we want out of the final paint job a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you something with that in mind. We've slipped a bit on some of these details and the yellow is pretty strong. As I've already called it, it's dying my skin. There's a really easy way to fix this. Before we do any stages on it, you, you don't have to do this before, but I prefer it before. What you can do is you can quickly just repeat your final step again, which is gonna probably be your white or alt one for us. So any of those slips you've got, um, and also anywhere that you wanna kind of redefine, and carefully take a smaller brush, maybe not an extra small, but a small. And then looking at those areas we've screwed up on, we're just gonna bring them back to life. We won't fix them 100%, but the color we've got coming which is a uh, cool color is going to help neutralize the yellows there a little bit as well so we've, we've got two helpful things going on here we've got this redefining our edges which just looks nice anyway and then we've got the fact that the blue is going to kind of pull away from any of those yellow slips with that in mind it's going to help us fix a lot of these details so we're just making our job a little bit easier all right techie number two we've covered this kind of at length and on repeat in the channel before. And this is using your washes carefully. So I'm gonna take some Nuln Oil. This is an old brush, you can tell. I've got red ends on my uh, kind of brushes that have seen better days. It's an old 1M, it's a pretty blunt, chubby brush. Good for this type of application. So I wanna show you the difference between an all over application and a selective application of a wash. These little details here that are probably gonna be somewhat gem-like. If I paint all over a detail like this, this is what happens. The entire area becomes darker. It will pull in certain areas. If I place a dot and think about where I go down and where I come up, it 
I can dot those gems. Now I could delete all of that and make it like the other one. I'm going to be using that, so I'll be doing both ways. I want to make these recesses darker to help define things, but I will at some point want to do the gems, and I can get shading within that gem if I just dot it in the middle. I don't have to do it perfectly either, absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be a spot on application, but this is something that I'm going to be using fairly carefully. So this detail here that I want to look shiny, when it's done, I would like one bit to be darker and one bit to be darker in the middle to be lighter. I'm going to be doing that there as well. I'm going to end my strokes where I want it the darkest and push towards it. This is called push pull. And it's a really, really kind of important part of upping your painting technique is thinking about the fact that where you lift off with your brush, that's generally where you get the most paint. So I'll put some more on to exaggerate it. Lift off, there's a dot there. That's all we're holding in mind. It's incredibly important. All over is a glaze. Um, like this, it can affect the entire piece to the same degree whether it sticks out or not. If I specifically dot in that lower corner there, that'll be darker and in comparison, that'll be lighter. We're going to use that. So as happens somewhat regularly on the channel, we've had something not go according to plan. I've done a, an orange and some of the oranges and reds, they're really, really opaque and it just obscured too much detail. I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't confident it was going to look good. My thinking was that we could have had just the entire piece be warm. I've got two options here. So what I've done is I've just kind of dry brushed white over it. This is going to be a lower quality section. Luckily the feet take a lot of attention. It's got some jewelry on it which will also pull attention. So I'm going to try and make a custom orange here and dilute it more. I'm going to try that. We can always take it towards red in the recesses or something like that. Pull it towards sepia uh, like we have with the dino which looks really good. If that doesn't work we're going to have to change course um, which would be complete change of course towards turquoise which is kind of a, a solid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make something out of the imperial fist because I know it and I like it and the blood angels red that we know um, I've got Sigvald burgundy as an option I'm going to make some mixes on the palette we'll see how they look together we'll then dilute them we'll try and test them in a small way and hopefully this uh, this goes better than the last one did I don't know what it is about oranges but making oranges and yellows cover is kind of hard work I guess, so maybe um, maybe sometimes the paints just go a little bit overboard. That seems nice. I mean, that's basically what we've already used before, so we kind of know we like it. I don't know if it's different enough. How are we gonna test this inside of a leg? I should dilute it, because I've just had problems with not diluting enough, so maybe use our brains, maybe. If ever in doubt, two thin coats, it works for contrast as well as other stuff. So let's try and make a less opaque mistake if we do make a mistake. So we don't have particularly light sections to test it on. That looks pretty good, but it is pretty close to the mount. What we can always do is we can make something like this, put it all over, and we have to a certain degree, we've got the option to filter it down with other stuff going over the top, which should be shades rather than contrasts. I think that's what I'm going to do, especially with it having some orange going on here. Let's make up a batch that we're happy with that is thinned enough. Hopefully this works out for the best. So I'm going to use probably the same paints that we used on the dyno. We use them on the rider. He can, he can look coherent, but we'll just have him be a little bit more orange. Three parts are dehydrated, uh, dehydrated Imperial Fist. A little dot of Sigvald Burgundy. And then the important thing is to get some of this on the go. should be enough. I'm going to give it a go first on an already screwed up area. That's better. Thin your paints, guys. That's such a basic mistake. It might be too close to the dyno, but like I said, we can filter it down if needs be. We'll slap this all over. Fingers crossed. We're, kind of <laughs> We're here now. So, uh, if it doesn't work, maybe we do some like crazy patterns or animal markings or something like that. You need to be careful to try and leave these bangles separate. We are completely unable to use gold on the beastie now because all of him will look yellow and it's quite difficult to make contrast gold look like gold anyway. So um, yeah, we're, we're kind of stuck with interesting bluey silver at this point as our only option, I think. I might paint some scratches on the armor afterwards to add some visual detail. But uh, let's see. I think it's a cool color. 
but it does look quite similar, doesn't it? We'll see how this works out. Let's do the face while we're here. You can see me get scared and commit. The top of his head is probably the weakest part of the model. The detailing is a little bit less obvious and the washes, if they are going to misbehave anywhere, that would be my prediction. So I'll be quite careful around the head. For multiple reasons, it's the head, so I want it to look good anyway. Keeping him at the same orientation as per normal, get his chest done and then uh, we're just going to leave him dry. Probably instantly repeat second coat, I think. But uh, yeah, we'll make our minds up once he is dry. Just going to scoot around. Um, I had a bit of pulling, so that mopped out. Makes all the difference. We are dry. It's turned out fairly well, actually. Not obscure the detail too much, but I don't want to use contrast again here. I'm going to jump straight to shades as predicted. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe for coherency, but also because it's very, very, very soft and forgiving, I'm going to use sepia as just a pretty weak base and then we're going to add a little bit of red into that with the blood angels very strong in comparison let's dilute it some more it's better let's have a look how this looks over the scales there we go okay i think i think we're going to be okay we can end up with things quite similar i could always drop a little bit of yellow into this if need be like maybe this is what i should have done with the mount it's just more efficient to use a stronger wash post contrast yeah we'll see let's have a look at them together now he should be should be quite different to it yeah he is that's all right we can get away with that i think Okay, so more detailing now. What I'm going to do is carefully do the armor silvery by dotting some blues on. Uh, basically, it's all going to be either Drakenhof or Nuln or a mix of the two. We'll dot that around like we have before, and then we'll go in and do some kind of fairly worrying work with really strong colors where we want it to be jade. Nuln detailing first, super quick. Very weak these days, Nuln, so fairly forgiving for this. We don't need to worry too much about it. will help us separate areas as well. We'll almost get black lining, a soft version of it at any rate. It's got the Draken half and the null mixed. We are going to have a bunch of things to wash, like jade or, or um, you know, other greeny turquoisey shades. That will probably help. Scary Vex, this is probably my favourite dry brushing on the entire thing. His greens look wicked. I can't remember what they were. We'll work out. Pretty sure it was Mantis Warriors green. Looks like it. Does that mean we want it elsewhere? Maybe.
Okay, so the majority of what you can see here is just me defining areas. This is really important because we're using uh, kind of a slightly uncontrolled technique. So putting those defining lines between the straps and the yellow areas, it'll make the straps look different and separate and distinct, and it'll really help the yellow jump out a little bit more as well. This piece was looking a bit scrappy, I feel, until we added in the little dots of different colors elsewhere. And the feathers, in fact, worked so well that there's a bit more of an in-depth tutorial coming up on that very, very soon. So dropping those turquoises around, um, the reds and stuff like that, even things like painting the tongue that you can see here, they really, really made a difference to how the kind of the final piece looked. This feather turned out well. The bigger they are, the harder they are, but it was absolutely worth spending a bit of a time on it. Especially as on the final model, this feather's actually kind of front facing, even though it's on the very, very back of it. Okay, so after quite a lot of just dabbing in details and stuff like that, I need to get a feel for how the piece is looking overall. So everything's gonna be popped together. I might not glue it permanently. We've picked some fairly neutral colors like snake bite leather. Uh, I'll probably do a second coat for the bit underneath the saddle and stuff like that, but they're not here to steal attention. I just want them to kind of fade into the background nicely. Maybe I should have used Black Templar. Um, I quite like the contrast between the bits that are meant to be silver or stony. <laughs> Undecided which, not sure if we pulled that off perfectly, but it's gone okay. Um, and elsewhere, things like this have really worked out well. Probably because I actually thought about it carefully. We're going to pop him together, have a look at the piece overall, and then we'll make some final decisions. It's looking quite cohesive, which I'm fairly happy with. I do want to do something better with his weapon, though. It's just not quite worked out. Uh, I'm going to go and look at the box art. All the bits that I've painted on sprues I'm going to take off. I'm confident now that I can kind of, even if I want to tinker with them, um, I should be able to do that on the model. We might even be able to pretty much push them in place given how good the fit is on a GW model pieces these days. Look at shiny necklace, what a happy dinosaur. All right, yeah, I think he's gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna glue these all together and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up see what it's worth spending our final push on. So we'll take our grey that we dry rushed before previously. My paint water is completely tropical currently. It's basically the basing scheme that this guy should be on. <laughs> Says a lot about the piece, I guess. Okay, a little bit of the grey. She left it on the stick, shouldn't I? So obviously this is going to handle the raised areas. Uh, hopefully we can kind of blue out the recesses and get away with it. Those gems can end up the color that they were, they, they looked great. And then transitioning into the white. Cool. And I can glue that to the model and we can just wash it on him. I mean, even that's kind of pulled it back. Just needs a wash and we'll be there. Cool, so basically we have final detailing steps remaining. I'm gonna catch the gems all over, that'll be boring, but we just gotta do it and it'll be really worth it. Maybe we'll gloss them afterwards. And then there's a few things like the ropes I need to define. I've lost my Black Templar. Um, <laughs> that's why they're not done. So we'll have to mix up our own. Uh, really is kind of punching out nicely though. On a vibrant base, here's our contacts. On a base of that color, let's not drop him in. That would look great, look at that. Okay, so the Drakenhof that we've used elsewhere is what I'm gonna to use to try and kind of deepen this blade a little, and I'm gonna do that in the same way that we've been doing a lot of stuff. I'm gonna place some blocks, or some blobs rather, in the center of the areas that I want to show you. Flesh terrors, use them very sparingly. This is for tongues. I'll wash it down a bit, or at least use it there, and I'll get all the inside of the mouth with it as well. I want it really fleshy looking. We have managed to keep off doing any proper brush painting for all of the model but the teeth. I hit those with some Valet Ivory. You could use any bright ivory, screaming skull, something like that though. 
We are now onto the eyes, however. Besides from giving them a little purple wash around them, um, I think we're gonna have to do this uh, old school, so. My favorite bit, you get to watch me try to not swear and try to paint on a straight line. For dry brushing, normally the camera isn't too much of an issue, but I do find it makes it a bit harder. If you're painting eyes or something like this, I have two major tips. One is to test how your paint's gonna leave your brush. I normally do that on my thumb. And the other one is to bring your model as close to your face as possible and brace really, really securely. So I'm gonna do my best equivalent of that with a camera in the way. That's how the paint's gonna leave the brush. That's the first step. Hold your breath as well, that's another one. You don't have to get it in one. You're better getting it in a couple of goes, not lots, because then you have more opportunities to make mistakes. Go for a repeat. I'm obviously not using a tired old brush here, by the way. I'm using a double zero S, which is kind of my absolute go-to and default for this type of work. The M's are a little bit fat for this. You might touch the edges of the eyes, the eyelids. So uh, yeah, double zero S is perfect. Nice and close, brace, hold breath, cross fingers. Okay then, so with eyes and stuff like this, often I'll get it to a point where I'm not dissatisfied with it and that's where I'll stop. If I aim for perfect and continue fiddling, there's just so much more opportunity for me to screw something up. And the final thing to do is do a little check and turn your model over. So access is gonna be easier if you're right-handed or left-handed on one side of the eye or the other. So for me, I'm gonna have to turn it the other way around, which I already have. That will help me get the bottom of it and that side of it. Okay, that is as good as we can hope for. And being a realist, that's where I'm gonna stop and go away. I'm gonna Google some eyes and I'm gonna pick one that looks most dinosaur appropriate. So off to Google dinosaurs. Okay, so the next step, I've picked my eyes. I picked one which just got a kind of an essential slit. And then maybe we can just gently wash around it, get away with that or filter the ivory color with something else over it. I only have to be neat once more. Now what I want to do is check how the dinosaur is facing. That's the angle I'm going to look at it. This guy's kind of looking off in no particular direction, just roaring. The dinosaur though, I feel it should be looking at us from this aspect. So that's where I'm going to try and point that eye straight at me. Same again, but with a need for a bit more precision. So plenty more worrying. It's really important that the paint is prepared on the brush in a way that's going to leave easily, but not too easily. That's what I'm going for if you're wondering why I'm fiddling around. This is also why I see a load of good painters with these little dashes all over their thumbs or their model holder. Okay, so looking down at me. Okay, I think we're, I think we're all right. He's kind of looking up a bit. <laughs> Actually, we're not okay. He's, uh, he looks like he's about to go to sleep. All right, let's take that slit down a bit further. Hopefully we haven't completely screwed it up with a derpy dinosaur. Eyes are so important. I can absolutely see why people just don't bother. All right, what can we salvage? is a bit better. I think that's, does that fall into the not failure category? I think it does. Quick wash. I like the crocodile ones that were interesting colors. That's made it a bit more subtle. I think we're good. Dinosaur eye done. Acceptable. Good enough. Right, we're done. Hopefully you liked the mini. Hopefully you found the video useful. I'm gonna run through a couple of kind of post completion feelings about it now. So I really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. I really like kind of racing through the bits that you can 
and then slowing down and enjoying the bits that you know will make a difference and that your time won't be wasted on. And for me here, that was the additional steps on the yellow beastie, kind of getting that depth into it. It makes it look a bit older, less clean and shiny. Again, should I have put blood on it? Like, I think maybe some like mud spatters on its feet. Do you notice I missed his toe, by the way? <laughs> Too late. Missed one of his toes. Anyway, um, yeah, some blood spatters on his feet and on his, uh, sorry, teeth and hands. Great anatomy, Byron. And some mud spatters on his feet. It would have added to the threat of the piece because he's looking quite angry and rather than comedy dinosaur, he could be like threatening dinosaur. It's about spending your time wisely. If you have any questions on how to spend your time wisely in a particular situation, pop them below. If you would like any more videos on that as a kind of overall um, theme, let us know that. For the upcoming impending Indomitus massive 40K release, we're actually gonna be releasing quite a lot of content on how to pick a scheme, how to pick an army, and how to approach things from two steps back, not like, you know, specifically how to paint yellow on this dude like this. Um, so if you've got any questions about that, please let us know. So Johnny uh, got the most likes comment in our recent Age of Metals video, which is just highlighting the subtitles or the boxes that we've been using with kind of key term definitions. If there's any key terms we use in a video and you want a definition of, or if you want to correct our definition or think that there's a better way to put it, we are all ears. We have a living document that he and I are working on. And if I say anything in a tutorial that he doesn't know what it means, then I'm going to pop it down below and try and do some stuff to basically make things more helpful. So you can expect to see plenty more of those coming up in future videos. Dan and Sasaki both made some good suggestions um, about fundamentals videos. You will see that kind of coming into play almost immediately with the Indomitus content like I have touched on. Yeah, so great suggestions, guys. And finally, we've got Forrest and Valkyrie um, from the very, very serious um, Slapshot Plus video from a while back. It wasn't serious, it was our April Fool's video. Just pointing out how hard it can be to paint sometimes and how hard it can be to dip your brush all the way to the metal, which is definitely not a good idea. Please don't do that, we were joking. Anyway, yeah, guys, if you get in touch with us via Instagram, um, make a comment underneath this uh, in response to the pin sticky and uh, get in touch on Instagram. We will sort you out with a brush set if you're choosing and a texture palette if you're choosing and get it in the post to you. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and we will see you very, very soon for some more painting content. No scales, it's probably gonna be power armored. Though it might be Tyranids. Who knows? There's a lot coming up.